Welcome back to the Hardware Unbox News Corner. I guess, let's be honest, we've covered a massive amount of news so far this week, including everything Intel announced at their processor launch and recent fiasco involving principal technology. So there's definitely not as much to cover in News Corner this week, but there's still some interesting things we haven't touched on. So let's get straight into it, I guess. The biggest non-Intel related news story this week surrounds TSMC's seven nanometer manufacturing. As I'm sure most of you are aware, TSMC has been volume manufacturing 7 nanometer chips for around half a year now, including the Apple A12 Bionic SoC for the latest iPhones. And of course, we're set to get a whole suite of new AMD products on 7 nanometers shortly, including 7 nanometer Vega for compute cards, Next Gen Epic, and of course, Zen 2 for consumer desktop. But TSMC are already moving on to the next big step for 7 nanometers, which is the introduction of extreme ultraviolet or EUV lithography, which will be used for elements of their 7 nanometer production pipeline. Current 7 nanometer chips are manufactured using deep ultraviolet lithography, but the move to EUV has been long awaited in the industry and is basically a requirement to go smaller than 7 nanometers. So TSMC are using it for non critical layers in a second generation 7 nanometer node called 7FF. And Antec has a great article that describes the more technical details of 7FF Plus and why TSMC are using EUV for this node, but it sounds like it will bring small improvements over their first gen 7 nanometer node due to the limited use of EUV. There are no claims about performance, but we should expect 20% higher transistor density and between 6 and 12% lower power consumption relative to first gen 7 nanometer. This should be particularly handy for mobile chips that need all the power savings they can get. TSMC has already taped out the first chip built on their second gen 7 nanometer node and they're also planning to specialize it into another process designed specifically for automotive customers. Considering it's already taped out it shouldn't be too long before it moves into a high volume phase. TSMC also provided an update on their next generation 5 nanometer node which is on track for 2020 or thereabouts. 5 nanometer will use EUV on up to 14 layers which should provide a handy boost to density around an 80% increase compared to their first First gen 7 nanometer. TSMC are also predicting 15% more performance at the same power or 20% lower power consumption at the same performance. Risk production of 5 nanometers is expected to begin in April of 2019. So from what TSMC is saying, it sounds like they aren't having any significant issues with 7 nanometers or development on 5 nanometers, which is great news for the future of hardware from both AMD and Nvidia, who both rely on the company's fabs. This one is just for interest's sake more than anything. Intel has managed to overclock a Core i9-9900K to 6.9 gigahertz on all cores with the help of liquid nitrogen and some extreme overclocking experts. Intel also claims they've hit 7.1 gigahertz all core and 7.4 gigahertz single core in their internal testing. And of course, with further tweaking, we'll see those numbers climb post launch. These figures don't tell us really anything about how the 9900K will fare in overclocking a typical user will actually be able to do with an air or liquid cooler, but it's interesting to see what these chips are capable of in the hands of professional overclockers, and certainly there's records being broken for 8 core CPUs there. Earlier this week, Microsoft completely stuffed up the rollout of the Windows 10 October 2018 update, otherwise known as version 1809, because Microsoft loves to use long update names. Uh, the update was supposed to begin a wide rollout several days ago, but users choosing to update early were discovering that their files in My Documents were being deleted during the update process. Not everyone was experiencing this issue, but certainly a small number of people were posting about this on various places. Obviously, that's bad news, so Microsoft decided to pause the rollout for a couple of days. Apparently, plenty of Windows Insider members had warned Microsoft of the issue when testing beta versions of the update months ago, but Microsoft chose to ignore them. Well, that was a huge mistake on their part because the issue reared its head during the public rollout. Seems pretty dumb of Microsoft to ignore what their beta testers were saying, but maybe they just assumed it was limited to a small collection of testers. Anyway, Microsoft resumed the rollout a couple of days ago with the issue fixed. The company said that 0.01% of users were affected, which as KitGuru points out could be around 700,000 users worldwide considering Windows 10 700 million install base. Apparently the bug was caused by something called known folder redirection being confused with known folder migration. Version 1809 was supposed to clean up empty duplicate known folders but ended up deleting the original folders instead thanks to this confusion. Microsoft says those that are affected by the bug in the initial rollout should contact customer support because data recovery is still an option. 
AOC has re-announced their FreeSync 2 HDR monitor for the US market indicating display is almost ready to ship for those that are interested. AOC first announced the AG322 QC4 back in April as a 27-inch 1440p 144Hz curved VA display sporting FreeSync 2 HDR and Display HDR 400 certification. Without local dimming, I don't think the HDR experience will be all that flash, but at least with FreeSync 2 HDR certification, we know we're getting at least 90% DCI-P3 coverage for a wider than standard color gamut. The monitor is already available in Europe, but we now know it'll be heading to the US for $550 on October 15, and that seems like a fairly respectable price if the HDR experience is at least slightly or somewhat better than just basic SDR. Microsoft are in the final stages of acquiring game studio Obsidian Entertainment, according to a report from Kotaku. You'd think the move will help them bolster their lineup of exclusive Xbox slash PC titles, which is currently struggling to compete with the quality of Sony's astonishing lineup for the PS4. And they've already shown they are interested in acquiring game studios of late. They've already purchased Playground, the studio behind Forza Horizon, and Ninja Theory, who developed Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Obsidian Entertainment is best known for their role-playing games, including Knights of the Old Republic 2, Fallout New Vegas, and more recently, Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2. They almost went bankrupt a few years ago as well. So with their history of making solid role-playing games, it'd be interesting to see what the studio could cook up with a larger budget and the backing of Microsoft. Certainly very exciting times for that particular studio and their games. Final story of the week. I guess this will be a shorter episode considering what we've covered so far. Uh, Microsoft has raised the price of official Windows 10 home licenses from $100 to $140 on the Windows Store. No idea why they've made this change, but they have. Uh, not that you should be buying licenses through the Windows Store when Newegg and other retailers are still selling official home OEM keys for the old $100 price. So definitely still check out for those sort of official OEM type deals. Uh, Windows 10 Pro will still set you back $200. And no, we don't recommend purchasing those sub $50 super dodgy Windows keys from dodgy online retailers. That's it for this week's News Corner. Pretty much an entire week of news on Hardware Unboxed, which has been fun. So we'll be back to some good old fashioned testing in the next few days. Subscribe to get News Corner in your inbox every Friday and hit that bell icon to ensure you see it. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our Discord community. And I'll catch you in the next one.